More than 1 million people in the United States are living with Parkinson's disease, and this number is expected to increase to 1.2 million by 2030, when nearly 90,000 people in the United States will be diagnosed with it yearly. 180,000 Americans live with quadriplegia, and each year, an additional nearly 20,000 suffer a paralyzing spinal cord injury. It would not be an exaggeration to say that Neuralink's appearance would change these entire cases. So how would Neuralink overcome social prejudice spectacularly after the first implant's success? Let's find out in today's episode. How does Neuralink help restore autonomy to people with quadriplegia? If you think that being a quadriplegic will never be able to use a computer or hold a mouse pointer, you are wrong. It's been just over 100 days since Nolan Darbo, who had to suffer the quadriplegic nearly a decade, became the first human being to be implanted with a Neuralink, was able to do things that seemed impossible. This whole procedure was conducted at the Barrow Neurological Institute in Phoenix, Arizona, which is the world's largest treatment and research hospital for neurological diseases. Through thorough testing on animals for decades, in May 2023, Elon Musk's startup researching a direct connection solution between the brain and Neuralink computer was licensed to conduct clinical trials on humans. After that, the first quadriplegic patient, Nolan Darbo, 29 years old, living in Arizona, was implanted with Neuralink's N1 chip as part of a brain machine interface designed to decode movement intent from brain signals, or telepathy. It records neural activity through 1,024 electrodes spanning 64 flexible and ultra-thin fibers. On March 20, 2024, this first volunteer was announced to the world and brought results beyond imagination, like a revolutionary surgery. So how extraordinary did Neuralink perform in its first patient? Up to now, Nolan Darbo is still emotional when talking about the process of rediscovering his life after eight harsh years. Let's see his whole process that was miraculously changed by science and technology. Before having the link, Nolan's primary digital interface was a mouth-held tablet stylus, a mouth stick that had to be put in place by a caregiver. The mouth stick can only be used in the upright position to operate a tablet. With prolonged use, it can lead to discomfort, muscle fatigue, and pressure sore. It also prevents normal speech. As a result, Noland couldn't wait to show his excitement after finishing his surgery that takes just 30 minutes. I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. It has already changed my life. He also shared that the biggest thing with comfort is that he can lie in my bed and use the link. Any other assistive technology had to have someone else help or have him sit up. And if you think using a computer requires hands to control the mouse, you were mistaken. In the weeks since his surgery, Noland has used the link to control his laptop from various positions, including while lying down in bed. He plays online computer games with friends like chess, browses the internet, live streams, and uses other applications on his MacBook all by controlling a cursor with his mind. He has even used the link to play Mario Kart on a Nintendo Switch console, something he had not been able to do since his spinal cord injury. The link has helped me reconnect with the world, my friends and my family. It's given me the ability to do things on my own again without needing my family at all hours of the day and night. Shared Noland Arbor, controlling the computer mouse with his mind, moving it on the screen easily. This technology promises to benefit people who have lost the use of their limbs and could help treat Parkinson's disease, epilepsy, and many others. This is an important step forward in connecting the human brain with computers, opening up many prospects in the future. On weekdays, Nolan contributes to research sessions for up to eight hours per day. On weekends, personal use and recreation can exceed 10 hours per day. Recently, he used the device for a total of 69 hours in a single week, in which 35 hours of structured sessions and an additional 34 hours of personal use. I thought that the mouth stick was a lot better than the brain machine interface a month ago. When we compared them, I saw that the brain machine interface was just as good, if not better, and it's still improving. 
The games I can play now are leaps and bounds better than previous one. I'm beating my friends in games that as a quadriplegic I should not be beating them in. In fact, controlling the mouse pointer with your mind is not something new. Two decades ago, an older generation chip implanted in the human brain helped a quadriplegic person use his thoughts to control a computer. But this chip, because of technological limitations 20 years ago, must be wired to an external device to transmit signals, meaning it must have a wire directly connected to the output. On the flip side, Neuralink's N1 implant is a coin-sized device that records and processes brain activity, enabling patients to control external devices through thought alone. Unlike non-invasive devices, Neuralink's implant is fully implanted and wireless, combining advanced features like individual neuron targeting and wireless recharging. This robotic arm can operate so precisely that it can eliminate even the subtle vibrations transmitted from the patient's heart beating to the brain or from the breathing in their chest. We have followed this special experiment and know that Neuralink's surgical robot arm will make implanting a chip into the brain simple and easy, just like when you go for eye surgery to treat nearsightedness. Now, once the patient has had Link implanted in the brain, the chip will be responsible for receiving electrical signals emitted from the cerebral cortex, then transferring these signal packets to an external computer using a Bluetooth connection. The computer will decode the signals in the patient's brain. Not only is he able to control a computer fluently and play chess, but Arbo also revealed that with just the Neuralink chip, he was able to play Civilization VI for eight hours continuously. Giving advice to quadriplegic patients who will be tested on the Neuralink chip in the future, Arbo said, don't see liability waiver forms before going on the operating table that cause fear. I have seen that the device's potential and now it's really difficult to live without the chip. So I to say to the next patient, the next volunteer, to experience it comfortably. Of course, we are still working together to resolve some outstanding issues. But once all the errors have been fixed, there is no reason not to bring this product to everyone. How has Neuralink overcome social prejudice and be warmly received? About six months before the surgery, Arbo said he didn't even know what Neuralink was. Then, although he was excited, at first Arbo thought carefully, this was still a thoughtful and risky choice. I spent a lot of time thinking back and considering all possible consequences, not only for myself, but also for my family who have to take care of me every day. Health risks are out of the question, and there are also issues associated with being the first to try something completely new. However, Arbo said that he was completely surprised by the speed of Neuralink's work. Only five months after registering as a volunteer to participate in a clinical trial of a chip connecting the brain to a computer, he was able to be brought to the operating table. Brain surgery is easy. What I was worried about and mentally prepared for was the recovery period, but I was discharged from the hospital in just one day. With the help of robots, the surgery only takes place within half an hour. During the surgery, the robot cuts a very small piece of the skull, places the Neuralink chip on the surface of the brain, replaces the skull, and then stitches the incision. This Neuralink project, used to receive ethical debates since its technology has sparked discussions about safety, ethics, and neuroscience. Some concerns include privacy, informed consent, and potential risks associated with brain implants. However, after Neuralink received Food and Drug Administration's approval for human trials in May 2023 and have reported recovering well in the first case, then it received positive reception full of curiosity and excitement thanks to the potential to help paralyzed individuals control computers or smartphones has garnered interest and support. There's no doubt that Neuralink's groundbreaking work has eliminated ethical questions and generated enthusiasm within the scientific community and the public. Kip Ludwig, former director of the Brainwave Computer Control Platform Design Program at the United States National Institutes of Health, also said, this is a great starting point, a positive step forward for patients. When Arbao has he can do things that he couldn't do before implanting their Neuralink chip.